somebody's trying to make an entrance here, like a grand entrance. It's like he wants to do something nice for you. That's how I'm feeling his energy. That's how he's coming across to me, because you did something nice for him. Uh, hold on, he said he's saying something to me. He's saying something else. I see you taking something, and I saw you bringing it to a remote place. Um, I was just in Newfoundland um, about seven months ago, and um, you put something. I, there. Yeah, I did. <clears throat> yeah, I was. Uh, I pulled it out of my pocket, and it was a picture. And I just wrote, I love you. He saw you, and he was with you when you did that. In honor of this man, he said he passed away with other people. It was a car accident, and he said he's not the only one. Uh, yeah. He said his name is Keith. Keith Frankie. That's Adrian Adonis' real name. Who? Adrian Adonis. He's the guy that I saw here. He's the last funeral I went to. His real name is Keith Frankie. This guy, Keith? Keith. Showed himself to you. That's... He showed himself to you. Yeah. So I need you to show me where that happened. OK. Come, I'll show you. OK. You had an experience in here? Yep. So are you prepared for whatever might happen? Listen, you've come this far. Ah, uh, oof, OK. Let's do it. All righty. <clears throat> My god. Oh. You feel this? Oh, man. There's just no denying. As soon as you walk in, there's a change of energy. This is an important spot right here, isn't That's it? That's it. That's exactly where he was. But Adrian looked different when you saw <sighs> him than when he died, didn't he? Most people identify Adrian Adonis when you watch him in YouTube or whatever. That, but that's not how he looked. He looked like when we were 22 years old and his hair was dark, not blonde. And he was wearing the same black leather jacket that we used to. I wore a black leather jacket my whole life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there was a log somehow was down there. I was on fire. Right. So the, your, your house was about to burn down. Fire. You had to act fast. And I looked, and he had that silly smirk on his face. Kind of like, I got you. And then all of a sudden, it was gone. You don't come down here often, do you? Um, <clears throat> I haven't actually come down in this room for <sighs> two, three months. Every time I come down, I've got to kind of go, OK, I'm going to sit down here and kind of leave me alone every time. You know what Keith just told me? He said, when you come here in this room, you always are hoping for something to happen. What would that be? Besides having some peace and quiet? Ah. Is he exposing you right now? Yeah. Ah. You hope something happens, he said. I hope I fall asleep and never wake up. For real? Yeah. He's really kind of really yelling at you now, like, like, what is the matter with you? Um. There's not a lot of difference in how you're going to experience life. You either have to experience it on this end of the veil or on the other end where he is. You die, you don't escape those emotions. You have to deal with them. 
I've had big issues with that. With what? These guys that you're talking about, <clears throat> when they passed away, it's like you? I lived, I should have gone at the same time with them. The same time as the other guys? Yeah. And, um... No. Then, um... And they're all gone and I'm lost. He just said to me, you know, you may not know this, but they consider you a major hero on the other side. They're telling me you're their hero for what you've done or all the good you've been doing for them. He said something about, this is an even exchange. Those shadows are Adrian. He's been watching out for your family. Seriously? Yeah. That's Adrian to a T. <laughs> he told me to tell you that. Would you say that pain is constantly with you? Um, all the time I'm awake. OK, so that's not, um, that's not something to take lightly, right? There's, I'll sit too, if I can. There's two different energies at work here. One energy is saying, if you put down your sword, they'll kill you. Yes. And Keith is here telling you, you already won the battle. It's over. There is no more battle. Yeah. Wait, 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 you know what he just said? He said, I wasn't gonna let that house burn down. I, it took him so long to buy it. <laughs> it's true. That's what he said. It was one of those, it just didn't even dawn on me till he like grabbed me. He said, you need to buy a house, get your family settled. It was like an epiphany. Yes, it was. You know what he's telling you now? Make that your home. See, he's still trying to get you to find home. All these years later, he's giving you another epiphany. He wants me to settle in. Your home is where your family is, your home is where your heart is, and your heart is your family. I love my family. So if they're here, this is your home. What about my dad? He's telling me straight out he can never have survived what you survived through. He was telling me all the, sh all the things he regretted, and I said to him, there must be something good you did. And he said he brought you into this world. He said that you're a better father than he ever was, and that he could tell you in a big admission. And not only that, Nobody in their family but you has fought as hard as anybody he's ever known to break the cycle. And when he looks at your children, he knows the cycle has been broken. That's a big accomplishment because that's going to go from generation to generation. It stopped with you. Do you understand how groundbreaking that is? OK. Let's take this theme back to where it goes. We talked about you fighting your demons, right? Think about this. Keith told me that when you struggle with putting that sword down, think of your family. And think of everything else as just a memory that you need to bury. And everything you want to bury, write it down on a piece of paper. Once it's out on paper, light a match. And there it is, you're done. And every time you want to rehash the pain, just remember that piece of paper was already burned and it doesn't exist anymore. How's that sound? Sounds a lot easier than the way I've been handling it. It is easy. That's what Keith said. Just do it, man. Just do it. That sounds like you. I have to tell you, I brought you something. 
I brought you a little gift. This is a pendant, and it's hard to see, but they're all dragons. And this will represent the demons that you need to slay whenever they come to the surface. That's beautiful. I hope you like it. It won't come off. Oh, I'm so happy. The journey that I went on today with Kim was pretty extraordinary. And uh, she pulled up names that were impossible to know. We put together situations that were impossible. <laughs> I was skeptical at first, but she was talking about Adrian. But as we talked about it, there was a couple things she said that were indicative of his character traits when him and I were alone. It's the way he lifted off my shoulders. I, I don't know how to explain it. You know what? Maybe it's more a feeling of hope. Uh, but there's a bit of a freedom to it. She's an incredible lady. 